Hello and welcome to this introduction to GST interest and discount. First, let's look at GST. This is the government. The government is a group of people who control and run the country. To do that, they need to pay people to defend the country, build the public transport network, such as the MRT trains, manage the country's resources, such as reservoirs, and do many other things. But to do all of these things, it needs money. So where does the government get money from? The government will actually collect money from people in the form of tax. There are many different kinds of tax, but the one we are looking at today is goods and services tax, which is GST. So what is goods and services tax, GST? It is the tax that is added to goods and services that are sold. In other countries, it is also known as value added tax or VAT or sales tax. In Singapore, the current GST rate is 7% of the price of the goods or service. Let's look at an example on GST. Billy buys a washing machine. The machine costs $500 before GST. The GST is 7%. How much does Billy have to pay for the washing machine? So first, we find the GST amount, which is 7% of $500. That is equal to 7 out of 100 times $500, and you get $35. Then, to find how much Billy has to pay, we add $500 and the GST, which is $35, together to get $535. So, Billy has to pay $535. Next, let's look at interest. This is a bag of rice. In 1997, its price was $10. 10 years later, in 2017, the price went up to $14.50. As you can see, prices can increase over time. This is called inflation. Now imagine we have two people, Alice and Bob. Bob wants to borrow money from Alice. Let's say he borrows $300. Now the money is with Bob. But this is Alice's money, so Bob has to return the money to Alice in the future. Meanwhile, Alice cannot use the money to buy things until Bob returns it. But let's say Alice wants to buy the bag of rice. Alice could have bought the rice if she had the money now. But remember that prices can increase over time. So when Bob returns the money to Alice in the future, the price of the rice may have increased. Then Alice will no longer be able to buy the rice with the money. What can Alice do? One way is Alice can charge an additional amount on top of the amount of money Bob borrowed. That means when Bob returns the money in the future, Bob has to return more money than what he borrowed from Alice at first. This additional amount is called interest. Let's say Alice decides to charge $1 as the interest. So when Bob returns the money he borrowed, Bob has to return $301. However, it is not nice to charge interest when lending money to friends because Friends may not be too happy about it. So what kind of organizations or people charge interest? The bank is an example. A bank actually lends large amounts of money to people. So they will want to charge interest on these large amounts of money. But in the first place, where does the bank get all this money from? The bank actually gets people to deposit or put money in the bank. And from there, they get the, amount, they get the large amounts of money they need to lend to other people. Then this raises a question. Why would people want to leave their money with someone else when they could just put it at home? 
To attract people to deposit or put money in the bank, the bank actually pays an additional amount on top of the amount deposited so that people are interested in putting money in the bank. This additional amount is also called interest and this helps the bank to get money. Let's look at an example on interest. Alice deposits $1,000 in the bank. The bank pays an interest rate of 2% per annum. This means 2% every year. How much money does Alice get at the end of one year? We can find the interest amount, which is 2% of $1,000. That is equal to 2 out of 100 times $1,000, and you get $20. To find how much money Alice gets at the end of one year, we add $1,000 and the interest, which is $20, together, and we get $1,020. So Alice gets $1,020 at the end of one year. Lastly, let's look at discount. We have a shop here that sells clothes. One day, it decides to bring in some new clothes. It may face some problems, such as not having enough space in the shop for the new clothes or not having enough people to buy the new stuff. In the first case, it needs to get rid of the old stuff more quickly, such as selling it off more quickly. Then it will have space to put the new stuff. To do that, it can lower the price of the old stuff. In the second case, it can lower the price of the new stuff so that more people will buy. This difference in the price is called discount. It is the difference between the usual price and the actual selling price of the things. Because more people will buy when the price is lower. So shops will offer discounts from time to time. Let's look at an example on discount. The usual price of a t-shirt at the shop was $80. During a promotion, the shop offered a discount of 10%. Dan bought the t-shirt during the promotion. How much did he pay? So we can find the discount, which is 10% of $80. That is equal to 10 out of 100 times $80. And you get $8. To find how much Dan paid, we subtract $8 from the usual price of $80 and we get $72. So Dan paid $72 for the t-shirt during the promotion. So as you can see, the price is lower after discount and that attracts people to buy the t-shirt.